Hello everybody and welcome to another exciting list video. It's uh, It's been a week, we've missed you, but today we're going to be continuing um, a video topic for our list that we started with Mackenzie from, uh, oh my god, uh, Side Game LLC, there we go, just had to get in the memory bank, uh, where we did investigator and asset pairs. So today we're doing uh, event and investigator pairs. So why don't we dive right in and Bryn, what is your number three? You got Act of Desperation and Mark Harrigan. Uh, it's not really because it's particularly good together. I just enjoy the flavor of Mark Harrigan running out of bullets and then just beating his opponent to death with the empty gun. Mm -hmm. um, it does have some neat things you can do with it, like uh, you know, using a well-maintained to return the item in question to your hand. Mm -hmm so that you can use it again. But uh, yeah, mostly it's just, you know, Mark Harrigan beating a guy to death with a flashlight or an empty gun or whatever, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I like, because we have yeah. that, that running joke where he brings more grenades, you know, because um, yeah. the well-maintained <laughs> grenades was a great uh, moment. But I also just like him like throwing a gun at someone and then be like, you know what, actually I kind of needed that. So then with the well-maintained, he picks it back up. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. You know, it's always a good list when we start with sexy Mark Harrigan. Always. Always. All right, let's go to my number three, which is Mano a Mano and Nathaniel Cho. Before I get to my list, I had this weird panic. I was like, dude, what if I accidentally put an asset for one of mine? Wouldn't that be the funniest thing in the world? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. But uh, I like cards that do testless damage due to my like of uh you know i like coup de gras i think it's a nice i usually it's like starting in any of my combat based green decks it's usually just like a starting card that stays there for a bit and i've always liked mono and mono but it just was never like good enough and then nathaniel cho came out and unfortunately the the downside in nathaniel cho is that like he really only does one thing he does that one thing really good but he kind of exists in a space where no one else really can take advantage of things advantage of things the way he does right now so like you see mano a mano it's like finally it has a home in nathaniel cho and i mean this card in nathaniel cho does do a lot like yeah you have to get hit by an enemy so like or spawn an, or draw an enemy for the turn but this card is just zero, one action, deal three damage in, in Nathaniel Cho. Um, I wish Nathaniel Cho wasn't so, like, railroady with how he plays and how you build. But mano a mano, I always enjoy resolving this card with him. It's just like, boom! I believe parasitic is the word you're looking for. Pardon? I believe parasitic is the term you're looking yes, for. Yes, yeah. He's just kind of like, yeah. He... Wait, you, mean, just... you mean you don't enjoy the, the sort of monkey paw headspace, the cards that are good and Nathaniel Cho exist in? Where it's like, I wish this card was better, like, granted. <laughs> in Nathaniel Cho. Yeah, but only in Nathaniel Cho. Like, damn it. Gotta be more careful with my monkey paw wishes. <laughs> Alright, Travis, what's your number three? Uh, is that my blast, Carolyn Fern? Uh, Carolyn Fern isn't allowed to play high level weapons. Despite being a guardian. Also, she has awful punch. But sometimes you need to kill enemies, and this Dynamite Blast is very, very good at that. Um, she doesn't have any issue, really, with playing for cost of events because of her passive resource gain and of her ability that wherever she heals someone, there's plenty of ways to make that, uh, to be able to consistently heal horror off of herself to ensure your economy is good. Mm -hmm. And this card is just. You don't have to spend an action on it, man. It's yeah. just three damage to every enemy and teammate over there. I feel... And they come limping back, and you're like, oh no, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Let me treat you. She's the doctor that poisons her patients yep. so she can get Let more Let me give you some first aid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I love the kind of dissonance that this card provides in Carolyn Fern because you're just always like, wait a minute, something's not right here. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to be helping people? Yeah. <laughs> just like, yeah. Yeah, I can't help someone when I've already healed them to full. Come on. Yeah, it's explosion therapy. 
It, it always for and for some reason too. Whenever you play Carol Fern on the channel, I always forget that you usually go into dynamite blast, and then in the future. I'm just like, what do we do about these enemies? And then you just throw a stick of dynamite in there, and I'm like, all right. <laughs> the, Excellent. The psychologist no, like, has this covered. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the high-level uh, blue cards are, like, weapons or we weapon-centric. Yeah. So they don't really fit into Carolyn's build, but this one is just a good way to spend your experience, a good and effective way to spend it as well. And her, her thing is that she can't take guardian weapons. She can't take no, any weapons can't. higher than level zero. Yeah. Okay, higher than level zero. So that's why she can run Meat Cleaver. Yeah. Also, she can run Meat Cleaver. Cause, well, I guess she could because can't feels or as can't as can't. But uh, yeah, no, like, and like this card's just really good. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's sick. It's sick. <laughs> All right, Bryn. What is your number two? I got a test of will and William Yorick. Uh, yeah, you don't really need it, but technically every really test that you make playing Will Yorick is a test of Will. <laughs> uh, that's that's what I got. It's, <laughs> are you telling me your pick is based off a stupid pun? No, I would never do that to you. <laughs> Specifically tell you. Yeah. It's uh, what I wouldn't do. Do you, do you think, Travis, that he this was a replacement for Safina with a Painted World, so he just still... Yeah, probably. Put, yeah, put it in out of spite. Yeah. <laughs> no, man, my, my initial... My, one of my initial picks was to put the Crystallizer with a green Investigator, even though it's not technically an event. Yeah, it's not technically an event. It does yeah. synergize with events, yeah. so... Yeah. All right, well, we'll move on, then. <laughs> Uh, my number two um, is Luke Robinson and stirring up trouble. So this is um, relatively new for me, but I'm recently I'm playing Luke for the first time in um, our Circle Undone Return to, and I've done this twice now, where you go into your portal and then just grab clues off a location and throw some curse tokens in the bag, and it honestly feels like you're cheating, like. You just get to, like, leave your location, move anywhere on the board, but in the meantime, you also grab the last two clues on a victory location. And it just feels, yep. like, juicy. Um, yeah. I'm all, There's sorry? a lot of similar cards that can fit here as well. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, but, this is, yeah, I agree, because, like, there's, um, there's one the coming flame. up on the list that I don't want to say out loud, um, <laughs> but... Like, this is the one that I had the most fun doing. But Luke Robinson, Travis did not lie. He is very fun to play. Um, very good. Yeah, he's a... I feel like I can do better with him still, but just I like all the movement he provides. You, It feels like you have so many decisions to make with him. Um, I know this has turned more into me just talking about Luke Robinson, but with Stirring Up Trouble, <laughs> is really fun. With uh, It just feels like you're cheating. All right, let's continue the Luke Love Fest, shall we, Travis? <laughs> yeah. Uh, mine is Luke Robinson and Spectral Razor. I like this one a lot because you can just, like, appear out of nowhere and, like, assassinate an enemy. You yeah. Just gut them and then, like, leave. Yeah. <laughs> Feed them with knife hands. One of, your teammates is, yeah, one of your teammates is like, oh, no, there's an enemy attacking me. And then, like, Luke's knife hand appears through the enemy's chest and it's gone. And then the monster's dead and you, Luke's nowhere to be found. I think Luke might be the true monster in that situation. He's literally a hound of Tindalos. <laughs> it's extra good when you play this to uh, stab your teammate because you didn't want to actually engage the enemy. Yep. Um, and I guess you can't because you have to play the you play the yeah you play the event as though you're engaged with him anyway. So yeah, 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 yeah. good call. Yeah, um, but. So you can't just gut your teammate. Actually, that makes this better, and I should be happy about it. But, but for some reason, he doesn't sound happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've done this, too, in the Circle Undone, and it is just as sick as Stirring Up Trouble as well. It's really fun. All right. Bryn, what is your number one? Uh, it 
doesn't have to be Tony Morgan here, but it is sleight of hand and investigators who can play it. Uh, <laughs> literally any of them. It, it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, like chiefly, chiefly ones who can also play the Lupara. So like that's why Tony Morgan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but man, there's a lot of cool things you can do with sleight of hand. I'm excited. Sleight of hand and a, a flashlight to investigate at minus three for all or minus two for all of your actions that turn. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, you could. Uh, you used to be able to sleight of hand in an acidic eye core. A strange mm -hmm. solution, acidic eye core, and just like melt everything at your location and be like blue character who mm -hmm. not on tony but uh, like yes not on tony no not um, yeah like investigators this just who could into play it, it. Like, yeah it's just a slight of appreciation yeah pretty sure. much yeah here i could just i pretty could just much. like do this you mean like monterey jack <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah could be in monterey jack i think oh. he's the one who uh, do that though you actually no one can anymore because slight of hand only puts in things that are level zero to three mm -hmm. so yeah but even then like uh, He's only green, yellow, who can, like, low that, green, high oh, yellow. Rex, Rex Harrison could also play, or Rex, uh, Rex Murphy. Rex, Rex Harrison. Murphy. Yeah, that's a different person. It's like <laughs> a real person. That'd be broke investigator, dude. Yeah, it would be. Um, yeah, I, it's just Rex Murphy, but prettier. Mm -hmm. I, I know we've chatted, um about the possibility of doing, uh, like, either, like, a, like, a, ta like, a no taboo run again, or, like, a make our own rules run, <laughs> Uh, so I'm, I'm for that I am excited for Bryn to play it as printed and just go freaking nuts with it. Oh man, you still probably play it with like a yellow character, so you can sleight of hand in your Necronomicon Petrus Dedacia. No, but that that's not what you do. That's what Travis <laughs> does. I know that already. <laughs> I mean, that seems that seems really good. Yeah. Yeah, I do kind of just miss the the simplicity of like sleight of handing in the lightning gun. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Uh, you, you you don't want to do anything busted with it. You just want to like play big guns a lot. <laughs> the guns are fun. Yeah, they are fun. Yeah. All right. Uh, mine is going to be. Let me just write down a time code. Gloria Goldberg and stargazing. What? I bet I bet you YouTube you were expecting Lucky here. No, Lucky's good, but like kind of just boring um this one i uh, have a weird i've talked about this many times before i just for some reason i like stargazing and i like the stars are right which allows you to when uh, someone draws it they don't draw their mythos card for the turn they get a draw card gain a resource and take an action um when you just throw it in the deck it's kind of just random bad bad not good but luckily with gloria it's actually like good and the reason for that is that stargazing is essentially a ward of protection. If you just like strip it down to what ward of protection does, it stops an encounter card, right? So, in theory, if you just follow the line, Travis isn't drawing a, an encounter card anymore. He's drawing the stars are right. So effectively, I stopped him from drawing a treachery card. So... Stargazing is just a very convoluted ward of protection in Gloria <laughs> Goldberg. I like it when I don't draw the encounter cards. I, I do always give it to you, usually. <laughs> yes, because I get grumpy if you don't. Yeah, I know. He yells at me after. I'm like, He's what like, could be, well, it's because I usually play the clue getter, and it's like, what could be better than having more clues? You know, no, like, exactly, right? right. And. And also because after recording, Travis, he's like, Justin, these are the three cards that you played that I think should have targeted me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, 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 we queue up, we like load up the video and watch through again. And I just point all the mistakes that Justin made. Not Brent. Brent knows when he makes mistakes. Yeah. He's like, yeah, this deduction yeah, you yeah, used on yourself, but you should have used it on me. <laughs> yeah. All right. Travis, why don't you close out the video with your number one? Yeah, this is Deny Existence and Harvey Walters. Uh, so this is one that I start, I stumbled upon kind of accidentally in a single collection run through the Dream Years where we built six decks uh, from one collection. And I was looking for things to do with my experience in Harvey Walters, and I was like, damn, Thrice Damn Curiosity sucks. Dying sucks. Um, 
and we came up with the idea to play Verse Tile to add a bunch of cards into my deck to partially mitigate the weakness by making me less likely to draw them, mm -hmm. draw the weakness, but also the off-color card is deny existence because you can just hold on to it, and when you draw Thrace Damn Curiosity, uh, it becomes a treachery card, and you can cancel the damage, and you just get to play Big Hand Harvey, and you don't have to care about taking damage from lots of cards in hand. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. And... It, you know it's good, too, because this is, like, the only time Travis thinks Versatile is worth it. Yeah, this might be the only... I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it before, but this might be the only time I've positively mentioned Versatile. And yeah. I think it's, like, genuinely worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Keeps you alive, adds more good cards to your deck, and also puts a Deny Existence in there. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why it adds more good cards is because you're playing Seeker, so your cards are just naturally good. Sick? All right. No, well, that's another list video. If you want to see more list videos, please let us know by liking the video, commenting down below, suggesting more list videos. We always like hearing more ideas as well. You can also go check out our Patreon page. Go support and join all of these awesome people in supporting the channel and getting a few fun goodies in the process. In addition, you should consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. It does help us out uh, and, you know, just gets more eyes on our videos, which means uh, we keep making more content. Thanks for watching, have a good one, and as always, GG's.